Hello internet, welcome to another antenna tutorial. This is a super important tutorial related to the radiation mechanism in linear wire antennas. In this tutorial, we'll decode the, the rationales behind the mathematics of radiation in linear wire antennas. We'll not derive the equations for uh, electric field intensity components or magnetic field intensity components but I'll guide you through the steps by which you can find these radiation fields. We'll not talk about the derivation part but we'll talk about the the rationale behind um, finding those radiation fields so uh, let us begin the linear wire antennas are classified into three different categories depending upon their length uh, so we have infinitesimal dipole for which the length of the antenna should be less than or equivalent to uh, lambda by 50 we have small dipole for which the length of the antenna should lie between lambda by 50 to lambda by 10 and of course lambda by 2 dipole antenna which is also known as Hertzian antenna has a length equivalent to lambda by 2 this is uh, the biggest in size and this is the smallest in size now if we draw uh, the uh, diagrams for uh, these linear wire antennas they they will look in reference to each other like this this being the smallest and this being the biggest now you can see the the length of the wire in an infinitesimal dipole is extremely small and lambda by 2 dipole has a significant length uh, which of course depends upon the wavelength of operation because all the lengths of the antennas are depending upon lambda now if we were to connect these antennas to some source these these sources will will produce the signal that we would eventually want to send uh, into the air so if these antennas are connected to these sources and these sources uh, send uh, alternating current to these uh, these wires then the current distribution in in the wires of these antennas would differ and that would matter a lot in the mathematics of radiation in linear wire antennas because the starting point of uh, discussion or derivation of radiation fields is the very cause of the making of radiation fields which is the current so the current distribution in infinitesimal dipole would 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 be a constant current because uh, you the length of the antenna is so small that you you will not be able to see the variation of the current in the length of the wire because the variation of the alternating current can only be seen on the length of the wire if the length of the wire is significant for example the distribution of the current would would be seen here uh, if we were to draw a distribution of current which is a very very popular curve we can see that at some point in time the current will be uh, at its peak maxima here and some add and some smaller amount of current will be 
here in this part of the wire and so on now that is happening only because the length of the wire is significant so you must understand that the the expression for the current in these wires will differ so it is important that you know that the expression for the current in an infinitesimal dipole is uh, I naught which is a constant and on the contrary the uh, current here will be clearly a function of sine for of course if if this is oriented in uh, horizontally and we are we are observing current to be flowing in the z direction so but the fact of the matter is uh, you you will not see variation of current in a very small length of wire and you'll see variation of current in a bigger length of wire that's the key point uh, the direction does not matter at all because you can place this antenna horizontally or vertically depending upon your polarization but for the sake of simplicity uh, we are uh, this is in the direction of Z now why is this current so very important uh, I'll tell you in a minute because when we start to uh, develop our understanding of radiation in linear wire antennas the first step is is to find the retarded potential now I would highly recommend all of you to read about retarded potential uh, a bit because this is one such potential which is made if, if for example this is the wire of the antenna you'll find this potential A at a, at a far off point from the antenna and that is why the name retarded retarded here signifies that it is at a, at a, at a distant place at a distant point P you'll find some potential to be developing because of some current flowing in the antenna so and another Im important and interesting fact is that this retarded potential which is found at a point P at a distant point P uh, will only depend upon the current in the antenna so you can see that this retarded potential is depending upon I of course it depends upon the distance and the permeability of the uh, material in which the antenna is placed but the deterministic factor which is in our hands is I only so uh, I the current flowing in uh, the antenna so if you were to if you were to start from a point uh, you would need to know the current in the antennas because if you know the uh, if you know the expression of current for a specific dipole you'll be able to find the retarded potential which is the starting point and eventually you need to finally you need to find the uh, values for uh, E and H for all uh, coordinates whatever coordinate system you you choose you'll need to find E for them for example uh, the most popular is the uh, spherical coordinate system uh, which is a representative of a three-dimensional space around an antenna so you'll need to find E theta E phi and E R and similarly H theta H phi and H R so this is what we are wanting to find and this is where I'll call this final step and this is where we start so an understanding of retarded potential what is retarded potential and it depends upon I and I in turn varies in different kinds of antennas would, would highly um, ease you in in deriving the expressions for e theta e phi 
ER, S theta, H phi, and HR, which are known as the radiation fields of an antenna. Now, the step number two is easy in terms of easier said than done because we have a very simple relationship B is equivalent to uh, curl of A. This is a very famous uh, expression that uh, magnetic flux density B is equivalent to the curl of A. Now why is this relationship important? Because uh, in order to find H, uh, we'll need to take help of B. From, from the value of A, we'll first find the value of A by substituting the appropriate values of I and after finding the values, uh, value of A, we'll find the value of B by simply taking the curl of A and then we'll use B is equivalent to mu H to find values of H and we'll find H theta, H phi and H R respectively and half of the work is done in step number two but as I said uh, before this is easier said than done because when you when you start to find a it will be in the uh, rectangular coordinate system and you'll need to uh, convert that into spherical or cylindrical coordinate system depending upon which one do you choose so the maths that you would see in in the books will be a lot tougher than uh, this relationship which seems a lot easier and once we have the value of H in hand then we go to step number three which again is derived from uh, Maxwell's equation that curl of H is equivalent to epsilon curly E by curly T and this is, uh, by the way, uh, Maxwell's fourth equation, considering that it's a lossless medium where sigma is zero. So uh, once we know the value of H, the values of E can easily be found out. E theta, E phi, and E R. Again, uh, this set and this set together uh, they form the radiation fields of an antenna. So that is how <coughs> so that is how we we find the radiation fields for an antenna. That is how we mathematically analyze the values of electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity at distant point from an antenna. Uh, I hope uh, this this method of uh, solving the radiation f fields for an antenna was of help and you'll be able to comprehend the mathematics from the books now in a better way and uh, if you liked the tutorial then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel you have a very good day and a good life ahead bye